Today I'm taking my first look at the Richard Mill RM7201. So the first thing I thought immediately when I saw the watch is I said, wow, it's kind of small. I mean, not small like in a bad way. It was kind of refreshing to finally see more of a compact, slimmer size case chronograph from Richard Mill. But I guess since you're so used to these watches being a bit bulkier, that's the first thing I realized. I said, wow, it's not that big. The pictures do lie. When they first released this watch a couple years ago, I honestly thought it was exactly the same size as an RM11 or an RM30. I thought it was that same thickness size case, just with a new look, with more of a modern twist to their chrono. But the minute I got the watch in my hand, I said, whoa, this is small, which I do like because let's face it, the RM11 and the RM1103, they're kind of big watches and not just anybody can wear them. So this kind of did classy it up a bit. How can I say? When they're a bit bigger, it just feels so much more like a sports watch where here can kind of pass a little bit more. I don't know. I mean, it might sound ridiculous what I'm saying, but just a little bit more dressy, I guess, less sporty. I think that's a better way to say it. A little bit less sporty. One thing I do want to say is that I immediately did not get the vibes of an RM5 or an RM10. I find those very small. It almost feels like a, a teenager's Richard Mill. I mean, don't kill me for saying that, but it's just the way that I feel. I did feel that it had a lot more oomph than an RM10 and an RM5, but the slimness did get my attention. Another thing that I also realized is that perhaps maybe this is exactly what it is. It almost feels exactly like an RM6701, but just the chrono version. That's kind of what I felt. It's got that same flat top design right on the glass, whereas the RM30, RM11, the Bubba, all that kind of have that nice curved glass. One thing that I immediately did not like was the strap, starting with the color. Yes, this is what the person that owns this watch decided to have, and. I respect that. I, for one, am not crazy about the combination of this burnt-ish orange with the rose gold. I think it's something that would accent more if perhaps maybe it was a titanium case. I think I'd like it a lot more if it was a white or a baby blue or a black. Another thing about this model is that the straps bring no texture. Like their counterparts, the other ones I've been mentioning, they kind of bring gills or cutouts and stuff like that. But I think that was the idea of this model. They wanted something that just wasn't so hyper sporty. When you get that watch with those big cases and then you got those straps with all those fancy cutouts and gills, they almost look like car vents. It makes it look a lot more sportier. Where this kind of gives it a bit more of a streamlined, refined look. Another thing I want to point out is that with this size case, it also makes it more unisex in the sense that it fits good for both men and women. I don't find a watch small. Everyone's used to seeing so much bigger cases. I want to also point out that when you're looking at a crazy watch like the original Nadal Turbions and stuff like that, the 2702s, they're not big watches. They kind of have the same size case. They're not the really, really big ones. So, I think that was a good move by them because now they introduced something that is not as big and is something that everybody can wear. I like the layout of the dial. I think the only thing I kind of maybe would have liked would be a little bit more of a skeletonized movement. The previous chrono had a glass sapphire dial that pretty much showed everything that was going on in the movement. This one is a bit different. It's kind of just a free hanging dial with, you know, the dial is pretty much just made out of titanium with a bunch of cutouts. So I do like it in a way, just very different. I also like the touch of colors that it has with the orange, the blue, and the green. I think it's a good touch overall and it's very balanced.
Another thing I noticed is how different the watch hands are. I kind of like how the second hand has that offset counterweight. I like that. Something completely different and obviously looks a bit more, we'll say, avant-garde. The crown and the push buttons also received an overhaul from the previous versions, you know? Instead of it having where it feels like it has a little rubber band, little piece of rubber wrapped on the crown, this one kind of like the whole crown feels like it's almost rubber coated. And it still has a little bit of that influence from the automotive world because if you notice, the crown almost feels like a tire tread the way it looks all the way around. But the one thing that I would say about this watch that definitely caught my attention out of everything is the case back. I think by far, this is the nicest case back out of any Richard Mille I've ever seen. Of course, excluding all the crazy million dollar ones, but for being a simple base model that they're coming out with or could possibly be the new flagship, I really like the look of the movement through the case back. There is a lot going on and it gives you a lot to look at. Whatever it lacked in skeleton in the front dial, it definitely made up for it on the case back. So overall, I like the watch. I think if right now I had a black strap, I'd probably love the watch. I also think that this model is a perfect candidate for those Kevlar straps that have the Velcro. I think that's the perfect watch for it. The weight is actually very good. It doesn't weigh too much. It feels very nice for being a full rolls on rolls RM, where Lord knows if you ever worn an RM1103 full rolls, I mean, it almost feels like the brick of the whole lineup. Oh yeah, and how can I forget? Part of the reason why I love the way that movement looks behind that clear case back is because this is the new CRMC1 movement from RM, which is their first fully in-house movement. Is that crazy or what? To think about all the watches that they have come out with and this is their first in-house movement? Needless to say, I think they did a very nice job because when you see the pictures through the back, you realize what I'm talking about. Pricing for the RM7201 is as follows. For a titanium version, it's gonna be around 188,000. Rose gold, well, it's probably gonna be in the 200 plus, very minimally over. The thing is, to buy one of these watches, well, <laughs> we've already seen what's going on. I just walked by the Rolex store right now and they got nothing there. You can only imagine what Richard Mill has. Richard Mill has a slap in the face for you. That's what they have when you walk into their boutique. To buy one of these watches, if you're not lucky enough or worthy to get it from them directly, you're gonna be probably paying easily, and don't quote me on this guys, easily double retail. I would say this exact watch right here would probably cost you over 400,000, probably even over 450. But hey, that's the way the market is right now. To get one of these pieces is pretty hard. It's the first one I've ever seen in the wild. Overall, I like this watch. If it had a black strap, or perhaps maybe one of those Kevlar Velcro straps, I probably love this watch. But for right now, it's safe to say that I think they did the right thing by slimming it down a little bit to give people other options. Comment below what you think about the RM72. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. How ridiculous that wall is. Seriously? There's, there's, there's a guy right now walking in a Versace robe. <laughs>